Well, you know, the climate agenda, though, is superseding everything when it comes to the Biden administration. That means changing the rules, which could be more devastating. By the way, there are certain rule changes out there that probably will be even harsher than reentering the Paris Climate Accord. I want to bring in managing partner of the Boxing Group, David Bonson. And David, you know, in addition to, of course, the Paris Climate Accord, there are changes. The one that, that caught my eye is the so-called social cost of carbon. I mean, how much is the impact of all of this going to be on our economy? Well, the hard part in measuring it is that we're so inundated with virtue signaling. There's so much just rank posturing and and a kind of pietistic nonsense coming out of corporate America and a lot of the policymakers that you're talking about that it's hard to know what's real bark and what's real bite. And and I found myself several times over the last couple of months saying, I kind of hope the outcome we get here is more Obama-like. And, and as you know, I was a frequent critic of President Obama but at least there was a lot more bark than there was bite in what he was doing on this issue. He said the right things for the left. He he postured a certain way. But at the end of the day, there really was mostly behind the scenes still an allowance of our own energy industry being able to go forward. Um, I'm not nearly as concerned about what Joe Biden might do as what Larry Fink might do. That stuff that you're bringing up is really dangerous. And speaking of which, it feels like you know, the war has centered on two names, it's, and it's hard to believe, but ExxonMobil and Chevron, but particularly ExxonMobil, front and center, uh, you know, their earnings report, I know they really tried to make nice, uh, you know, we're doing the right things, we're putting aside the billions of dollars, but uh, it feels like that's the next target of, of the left. Well, but see, I really believe, and we've talked about this on your show before, uh, Exxon is a huge contributor to the carbon tax movement. The reality is that all those things they're talking about, it's not going to come out of ExxonMobil's bottom line. It's going to come out of smaller producers and drillers, E&P companies mm. in uh, the Permian Basin, Texas, Oklahoma. You go up to Marcellus. They're going to go after the little guy because the subsidy is going to be the regulation. That's going to help. ExxonMobil because they have mm. the power, the size, the right. access to capital markets uh, to kind of navigate through the complexity. So I think that you're right. They will go after Exxon and Chevron rhetorically, but the policies will end up hurting the little guy and just making Exxon and Chevron all the stronger. Wow. So and that will be the shell miracle. Fantastic point. I got less than a minute. And I got to ask you about this report I read. Uh, it kind of blew me away. It's from Bloomberg. They said that America now has slipped out of the top 10 most innovative countries in the world. We're no longer number one. We're number one, one, 11. What the heck happened? Well, you know, it's so hard to know how they're actually measuring all this stuff. At the end of the day, do I really believe there are 10 countries more innovative than America and our talent base? I don't, but I do think there's a lot of people that would like that to be true. I think there's a lot of people that don't prize entrepreneurship, innovation, growth, prosperity, all the things you and I believe in uh, so fervently, Charles. So at the end of the day, the American DNA is one of innovation and growth. The problem is there's the whole movement working against it, we have to resist that. Dave, I got to admit, I got the chills when you gave that answer just now. It is so perfect and so spot on. Thanks so much, my friend. That was great. Thank you. Thank you.